Perhaps the easiest way of making a town's acquaintance is to ascertain how the people in it work, how they love, and how they die. In our little town, is this, one wonders, an effect of the climate, all three are done on much the same lines with the same feverish yet casual air. The truth is that everyone is bored and devotes himself to cultivating habits. Our citizens work hard, but solely with the object of getting rich. Their chief interest is in commerce, and their chief aim in life is, as they call it, doing business. Naturally, they don't just choose such simpler pleasures as lovemaking, sea bathing, going to the pictures. But, very sensibly, they reserve these pastimes for Saturday afternoons and Sundays, and employ the rest of the week in making money as much as possible. In the evening, on leaving the office, they foregather at an hour that never varies, in the cafes, stroll the same boulevard, or take the air on their balconies. The passions of the young are violent and short-lived. The vices of older men seldom range beyond an addiction to bowling, to banquets and socials, or clubs where large sums change hands on the fall of a card. It will be said, no doubt, that these habits are not peculiar to our town. Really, all our contemporaries are much the same. Certainly nothing is commoner nowadays than to see people working from morn till night and then proceeding to fritter away at card tables, in cafes, and in small talk what time is left for living. Nevertheless, there still exist towns and countries where people have, now and then, an inkling of something different. In general, it doesn't change their lives. Still, they've had an intimation, and that's so much to the good. Oran, however, seems to be a town without intimations. In other words, completely modern. Hence, I see no need to dwell on the manner of loving in our town. The men and women consume one another rapidly in what is called the act of love, or else settle down to a mild habit of conjugality. We seldom find a mean between these extremes. That, too, is not exceptional. At Oran, as elsewhere, for lack of time and thinking, people have to love one another without knowing much about it. What is more exceptional in our town is the difficulty one may experience there in dying. Difficulty, perhaps, is not the right word. Discomfort would come nearer. Being ill is never agreeable, but there are towns that stand by you, so to speak, when you're sick, in which you can, after a fashion, let yourself go. An invalid needs small attentions. He likes to have something to rely on, and that's natural enough. But at Oran, the violent extremes of temperature the exigencies of business, the uninspiring surroundings, the sudden nightfalls, and the very nature of its pleasures call for good health. An invalid feels out of it there. Think what it must be for a dying man trapped behind hundreds of walls, all sizzling with heat, while the whole population, sitting in cafes or hanging on the telephone, is discussing shipments, bills of lading, discounts. It will then be obvious what discomfort attends death, even modern death when it waylays you under such conditions in a dry place. These somewhat haphazard observations may give a fair idea of what our town is like. However, we must not exaggerate. Really, all that was to be conveyed was the banality of the town's appearance and of life in it. But you can get through the days there without trouble once you have formed habits. And since habits are precisely what our town encourages, all is for the best. Viewed from this angle, its life is not particularly exciting. That must be admitted. But, at least, social unrest is quite unknown among us. And our frank-spoken, amiable, and industrious citizens have always inspired a reasonable esteem in visitors. Treeless, glamourless, soulless, the town of Oran ends by seeming restful. And after a while, you go complacently to sleep there.